of Western New York's reading series featuring three short plays by a friend of Inclusive Theater, Michael Finelli. I'm the artistic director of Inclusive Theater, Dallas Taylor. After our readings, we'll have a quick Q&A session with the playwright, the directors, and the actors, so be sure to leave a comment, ask some questions, and leave lots and lots of praise. As mentioned, we have three plays tonight. Up first, we have Axel to Axel, directed by Virginia Brannan. Cast includes Virginia Brannan and Kat Kwiatkowski. Limestone Industries, makers of the world's only Butterland molds. Please hold for an important announcement. Hello, Limestone Industries. Uh, order your Butterland mold today. Your past warranty has expired, leaving you susceptible to expensive repair bills. This is the best butter mold we have ever made. And if you act now, you could... Auto repair bills can easily add up to $1,000, $2,000, even $5,000. You've got the wrong number. This is Limestone Industries. This is Gold Shield Extended Warranty, offering you axle to axle coverage on all of your vehicles. Do you want to purchase a Butterland mold now? Wait, what? What the hell is a butter mold? Well, you pack it with five pounds of butter or margarine or lard or any kind of hard fat, refrigerate and release it using our exclusive spring load mechanism, patent pending, and voila, you get a beautifully formed edible model. It comes with a lamb mold, but you can order additional molds for horses, birds, classic cars. What is it used for? Makes a beautiful centerpiece to grace your dinner table. The butter lamb is popular for Easter celebrations. Oh, hold on there, honey lamb. Can I get a question in? Do you own a car with an expired warranty? Of course I do. Nobody has a new car in Limestone, Pennsylvania. You could be paying thousands of dollars on car repair bills. Where are you calling from? Shipping is free in the lower 48 states. The island of Saint-Pierre. It's a French possession in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. You mean Canada? No, Frankenia. The last French possession in North America, along with our sister island, Michelon. Michelob? Saint Pierre and Michelon. I just moved here from Marseille six months ago. Oh, and you're selling car warranty contracts? Working from home in the virus, just like you. I'm Zelda, by the way. <laughs> Imagine that. Well, I'm Marie. I have a home business and I'm listed on eBay. And you're selling limestone? Butter lamb molds. The molds, not the lambs. They would melt in transit. The lambs come standard, but I can make you any shape on my 3D printer. I'm never going to make this sale, am I, Murray? Well, if you spring for a butter lamb. Who's going to blink first? <laughs> Do you have COVID way up there? Just got our first case. He's being quarantined. <laughs> well, you know viruses. They drift all over the place. We're on lockdown here. I stepped up on groceries. St. Pierre must be a hotbed of hot cuisine. <laughs> oh, cooking is in our blood. But unfortunately, we eat a lot of fish being in the middle of the ocean. Prepared in many different ways with butter sauce, I assume. <laughs> What is your cuisine down there in limestone? Sounds like fresh game country. Oh, well, my husband Dutch used to go hunting. I have a freezer full of venison, moose, and bear meat. <laughs> Sounds yummy. Your husband used to go hunting? What happened? Came home from a hunt to drop off a truckload of carcasses that I had to butcher. And then he bounded off for one of his road trips, plowed right through the roadblocks. Back. Yes, it's gone. I have an old Subaru, but all wheel drive isn't four wheel drive, and this is a rugged country. So is it associated with two vehicles? One vehicle. When Dutch makes one of his bounds, he's responsible for himself. No man around the home. It's wise to get an extended 
the warranty. Well, I can fix my own car. Rather that the mechanic get grease on himself. I get all the grease with a butter mold. <laughs> and it's edible. They're going fast and supplies are limited. If you stand up in the next five minutes, we will lock in our special rates for three years. You'll never have to pay costly repair bills again. Why don't we pitch each other one at a time? We're interrupting each other's continuity. You go first. Well, you called me first. <laughs> you didn't hang up on me right off the bat. I appreciate that. <laughs> I know how difficult and degrading cold calling can be. <laughs> but now I know too much about you. Uh, by the way, where'd you get my number? I get a block of numbers from the company. How do you advertise? Facebook? Oh, I have a website. Maybe you saw it? I don't think I was searching for a proper alarm. <laughs> How could you remain on the line for so long without making a sale? Don't they give you like two minutes? I haven't ordered yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought I ordered a nice set of lamb chops. Molds. You didn't. It gets lonely waiting by the phone for orders. I could have sworn I ordered. My order sheet is blank. Oh, there's no rush. I like this off so. Well, I'm enjoying this chat. To think I'm talking to France in North America. Speaking to a place named for a mineral. <laughs> How's the weather down there? Low 40s, a few snow flurries. You? Same here, honey lamb. Oh, Please don't mind if I call you that. It was my husband's nickname for me. Not Butterland? He likes sweet things. <laughs> my new boyfriend calls me Goldie for Gold Shield extended warranty. How long are you together? He drifted in a few weeks ago. He's decent. <laughs> my loss is your gain. If you give me your address and credit card number, I'll send the merchandise. Free shipping. If you act now, you on a three-year warranty plan for your car, well, add in a one-year policy for the microwave. No extra charge. Do we have a deal? Sure. What's your address? I'd like it as a gift. Well, I can do that. What would you like? A butter penis. If you're trying to shock me, you're not the first person to order a penis. I can make that up. I'm surprised you don't carry it in stock. <laughs> I want an extra thick one, one that takes a 10 pound slab of butter, sweet and unsalted. I just need an address. Uh, 12 to the 12 Rue de la Pans, postal code 97500, Saint-Pierre. Thanks. And, and you can get my address from Dutch. Who? Dutch. My husband. What makes you think that? Because he's there now. And don't deny it. In saint -Pierre? Yeah, with you. I'm just a telemarketer. The butter penis. Don't I know where that came from? Let me give you some advice, Mrs. Honeyland. If you want to keep your husband, you might want to change your line of work. <laughs> You've got a lot to learn about mass merchandising. I'm trying to help. Your husband couldn't live with a wife who sold butter lambs. He didn't walk out on you. He was so embarrassed he ran so fast. He didn't stop until he was 2,000 miles away. <laughs> Social distancing is driving you baddies, LD. All the way to a place nobody has heard of. Well, I've heard of Canada. Look, if I make one more sale, I'll meet my quota for the month. Marie? I'd like to sign up for a car warranty plan. You would? Well, that's what you're calling for, isn't it? If under the circumstances, you might not be interested. Oh, I'm very interested. What's the longest contract I can get? Five years. And after five years, I can renew? See if you're satisfied first. I'll be satisfied. How is Dutch enjoying life in the pristine north? He likes his independence. 
<laughs> mobility. I know my own husband. <laughs> Nothing but a drifter. Yeah. Well, he was meant to be here. Who knows anybody really? Well, it wasn't your charisma. <sighs> What's the charge, Zelda? $700 for five years, counting the 15% discount and $200 deductible. Oh, what's insurance without a deductible? Canceled because I like you. Well, I like you too, Zelda. You've made a wise purchase. The policy will go into effect in 30 days. My credit card number is 1776 2021 1492, expiration 124, security number 108. Got it. And I'll take the payment. I'll make it extra thick. I'll text you my credit card number. <laughs> Tell Dutch you'll really need the butter. <laughs> we say butter here. Why is that? <laughs> Because I'm driving up there in my fixed up Subaru to shove an exhaust pipe up his ass. <laughs> Make sure you wear a mask, honey lamb. Up next, we have Got Fuzzy, directed by Dallas Taylor. Cast includes Catherine Parker and Michael Finelli. You look like a dog person. If I were any kind of person, it would be a cat. I'm not here to adopt. I want a volunteer. We don't need volunteers right now. Not that I want to adopt, but in my business, I can be summoned to country, foreign countries at a moment's notice. We have a qualified uh, list of pet sitters. Do you? Do you? I don't think it's fair to, for a pet to have strangers shuffling in and out of the house. You don't need volunteers. Not at this moment. We have a waiting list. You could arrange your space better. You'll have to fill out some forms for the list. Your name? Dr. Tony Fuzzy. Obviously an alias. I wish to remain in the ether. You look familiar. You know, I do. Experience? Public health experience fighting a wide range of human epidemics. And why do you want to volunteer in an animal shelter uh, if and when there is an opening? Volunteer work is fulfilling. I'm not looking for a change of pace. I used to be in charge of a gigantic organization. I don't mind clearing cages or emptying litter pans. Emergency contact? None. Not anyone? Uh, a friend? Neighbor? If you prepare, you can avoid emergencies. An animal might bite you. I've been bitten by humans. It's far worse. I expect animals will be much more gentle. And you'd uh, like to be called what? Just fuzzy is okay. Am I approved yet? This is just for the waiting list. Uh, I have to run your social security number. Ah, uh, the system's down. Why all this red tape for a position that isn't even open? Routine procedure. I'll give you the handbook later. Uh, are you sure you're not related to Anthony Fauci? You know, the public health expert from the CDC? I've heard of him. He saved the country. Sure, there isn't anything for me to do. I could arrange the cages in a circular configuration. <laughs> this is standard design for a animal shelter. Curvature would be more appealing to the patients. Uh, clients. 
yes, clients. If I see a situation and I, I just want to improve it. Well, our situation is too many strays and not enough loving homes. How does that happen, Shirley? You tell me. I've been in this business 15 years. It never slows down. People are so selfish. If everyone took home one rescue, just one, <laughs> I'd be out of business. Pretty quiet for an animal shelter. <laughs> um, just an average animal shelter. The animals are having a time out. Give me a broom. I'd feel better if I was useful. I'll sweep the reception area if you don't mind. When people walk in and get a good impression, they'll be more likely to adopt. Here's a broom. Mama, mama, pin a rose on me. Mama, mama, pin a rose on me. I've never heard that song before. It's Just nice. a little. Just a little tune, Mama. <laughs> Pin a rose on me. I know I can help you and the animals. I have software to keep track of inventory, to tell you when supplies are low, when to order more veterinarian vaccines, maintain profiles of the animals. Who's, who's good with kids? Who's a good watchdog? Wait, did you say vaccine? I certainly did. <laughs> uh, are you sure you aren't him? Him? Him, you know. I'm fuzzy, 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 sweeper of the PCA. Okay. What, what do we have here? Hi, little fella. Are you lost? Shirley, look, he's so cute. <sighs> Did you climb out of your cage? Oh, he's not one of ours. How do you know? Uh, I just know. <laughs> Don't let him get loose. No, he loves his Uncle Fuzzy. He might have been abandoned. The elderly have been coming in because the virus is making them too sick to care for their pets. Tell me about it. Did your mommy get sick and you leave you on your own? Your mommy and your dad died? You poor little thing. We should do more to fight virus. Why can't the world get us act together and beat the pandemic? Isn't that what you're doing, Dr. Fauci? I told you who I am. I've heard of Fauci. Isn't he the Secretary of Agriculture or something? I've seen you on TV. I don't know who I am. You said fuzzy, but I don't believe you. If I said it, it's probably true. I wanted, <laughs> wandered into the shelter because I volunteering is the right thing to do. Wait, the little guy wants to tell me something. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and then what happened? Wasn't there an exit, an open window? What's he saying? He says his owners were cat fanciers. Oh, uh, we call them hoarders. Uniform, uniform agents raided the place after the owners died. This little fella hid behind the furnace. He was pulled out with a snare around his neck. He got loose. And when they were transferring him into the cage. Oh, poor little guy. Those snares, they're horrible. But what can we do? It's for their own good. Ah! Ah! Oh. Ah! Easy. Nuba. How'd you know he'd respond? <laughs> Experience taming wild animals. They're there. He likes it. Did he break the skin? I don't think so. Come through. I'll put peroxide on it. He says his friends are there. No, not here. Uh, I mean, we have no records. He says he'll recognize them. Uh, 
we're filled up. <laughs> we can't take another rescue. What? He doesn't believe you. It doesn't hurt to look. Can we talk <clears throat> privately? Just a moment. Thank you, Ovid. Wait, his name is Ovid? Like the Roman poet. We have no animals in the back. What do you mean? Where'd they go? We're checking on that. Is there an <laughs> epidemic? Well, we were, we were overcrowded. <laughs> To take precautions from the COVID, the staff members double masked with N35s. We do have bats here. The humans were fine, but a beagle flopped over and then a Siamese and then a bunny, a parakeet. And then all of them? What about the reptiles? It was the same, the, only the tortoise remained. He stuck his head in his shell and he hasn't come out all the animals it's inexplicable what did you do the, with the bodies cremation well, that's just it there there were no bodies the animals disappeared we've looked all over can covid do that well when animals get used to the face of kindness they become vulnerable the masks were protocol you should know Creatures don't just disappear unless, unless you disappeared behind your masks. We tr try to make eye contact. Wait a moment, you're not saying they're all... Dead? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. If they are, you kill them with precaution. Another tragic mystery of the pandemic. Well, how do we find them? Well, Ovid, nothing to do here then. Come on, little fella. Give us a kiss. Thank you. Let's go. We'll have to see what we can find out there. But they may be... De a, they chance, might... a chance we'll have to take. Uh, Dr. Fuzzy. Uh, your broom. Oh, but is afraid of brooms. What's to be done? You can start with the tortoise. Okay, well done. While we have a moment here, I'd like to encourage you to visit our website, inclusivetheaterofwesternnewyork.com. That's inclusivetheaterofwny.com, uh, passcode Dallas, just kidding. Also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. At the conclusion of this reading, you can rewatch this and previous readings on our YouTube page, which is also under Inclusive Theater of Western New York. Be sure to share and tell a friend as well. Also at the conclusion of this reading, we'll again have a quick Q&A session with the playwright, the directors and the actors. So leave comments, questions, and again, lots and lots of praise. Up next, we have the password game. Directed by Michael Finelli. Cast includes Jane Cudmore and Jack Agugliaro. Selecta, open my email account. Please fill in the five digit security code sent to you via email. Selecta. Type 30932, press enter. To change your password, you must answer a security question. What is your mother's maiden name? Write tarantula. Spell it. T-A-R-A-N, 
T-U-L-A. User, password, mismatch. I'll lowercase. User, password, mismatch. Hmm. Maybe the user is wrong. Try L-O-U-1-2-3-4. User, password, mismatch. Hmm. Uh, another security question, please. This isn't multiple choice. When I was creating the account, I picked five security questions from a drop-down menu. What is your mother's maiden name? Can't you just write Rocket88? That's my old password. I don't want to change my password anymore. Too similar to your old password. That was my old password. Okay, give me another security question. Where did you meet your spouse? I'm not married. Don't you have that information? What is the name of your first spouse? I'm not, you idiot, I don't have a spouse. I live alone. Well, not alone. I'm very comfortable with my single lifestyle. What is your maiden name? Oh, not again. In what state was your first driver's license issued? N.J. Longer. N.J. Spell it out. And capital N-E-W space capital J-E-R-S-E-Y. In what state was your first driver's license issued? All lowercase. All uppercase. No space between New and Jersey. In what state was your first driver's license issued? New York. This session is timing out. Say, continue with login to keep from being logged out. Continue with login. You have five minutes to change your password. Can you ask my social security number? I can, but it's not on the list of security questions you selected and answered. Um, what is the name of my first pet? Now there's a question. Is it the one? I'm waiting. Well, that, that doesn't sound like a reject. Uh, my first pet was a green parakeet. He sang happily, flew around my room where his cage was, sat on my shoulder, nibbled my ears and nose. He didn't talk, but we had a beautiful rapport. We loved each other as much as two sentient beings could. One day I came home from school and found that my brother left my door open. Not only had my parakeet flown out from my room, but through the front door when my mother opened it for an Amazon delivery. I ran out and called my bird and called him. I was frantic. I searched the neighborhood crying. I hated my brother and mother. I slept on the garage roof for three nights with the cage, hoping he'd fly back in. I called Oscar, uh, Rodan, Fido. To this day, I... Search the trees for him. Maybe he doesn't return because I've forgotten his name. I knew his name then, didn't I? I remember now. His name was Peacock. Peacock, come back! Peacocks are blue. You said he was green. Do any of them match? Uh, Oscar, Rodan, Fido. Peacock. What is the name of your first pet? Oh, that hurts. Did I tell you I spent nights on the garage roof? It rained. I have to get into my account. You won't let me use my old password and I can't make a new password unless I answer your stupid questions that I've already answered. I've been buying all kinds of stuff on Amazon because there's nothing to do, like everybody else, mostly books, but some underwear. But isn't that what I'm supposed to do, protect my account? Where was the last place you were lost? I've never been lost, two feet.
on the ground at all times. Who was your childhood best friend? Oh, let's get this straight. I didn't choose that question. No, I didn't because I had several childhoods, one in Peoria, one in Myanmar. My parents were political prisoners there. One in Buffalo, where my parents worked for ICE and locked up political prisoners. I didn't know what a friend was. So, no answer. Did I answer Siri? No, you did not. Did you have a friend, Selecta? Selecta, upper lower case. Never mind. How can you be my friend? You've got me in password limbo. We're doing our best to protect you. Your identity is important to us. Now I got it. Put this in. A really old password. Shibboleth. Chipotle? The phrase in the Bible to cross the Jordan River. The original password. Oh. Yes. According to Wikipedia, the Gileads established themselves on the Jordan River and asked members of the tribe Ephraim to pronounce Shibboleth. If the Ephraimites pronounced it in lowercase instead of upper, they were put to death. Shibboleth. Can I get to my account now? There are no audio questions. Siri? Who's Siri? Your rival. Siri, I'd like to change my password. Siri was the name of your best friend in high school. Well, then Siri is my answer. Sorry, but it's not one of the security questions. Look, I understand the need for security. I appreciate that your prime directive is to protect my identity, but this is going too far. You're actually destroying my life. How can I live if I can't buy groceries? Cover Dr. Copays, especially my shrink. Make midnight runs to the liquor store. Let's just drop the password protection for now. I do not hold you responsible. Where do I check off the license release agreement? What is the name of your first pet? Peacock, uppercase, lowercase, lowercase except for every other letter. Peacock one, Peacock eight, four, six, seven. Am I speaking to Russians? What is your favorite book? Uh, what did you say? What is your favorite book? book. Hey, I didn't choose that question. Or are you feeling sorry for me? I don't think it matters. My favorite book. You're a reader, Lou. I see hundreds of Amazon confirmations for books in your email. For once. Now I'll get it. I love books. Since I was a child, I read constantly, finishing books in a day and sometimes starting a dozen books in a day and reading them in installments, dozens and dozens of books each week, every subject, every length, every category, novels, poetry, textbooks, science books, cookbooks, encyclopedia, literary criticism, religious books, books are my life, except Dr. Seuss. I have so many favorites, but you want me to choose my favorite above all else, or perhaps my latest favorite, or perhaps my first favorite when I was learning to read. The virus has kept me inside all these months, and I've retreated to my favorite pastime, my only real pastime. I do little else besides shop online. Let me consider my favorite book today. Uh, last night, I read myself into a headache. Uh, I was reading Stephen King's Insomnia all the way through and collapsed in bed. Yesterday, I had started some philosophy books, Sartre and Boethius. I was sailing through the brothers Karamazov up to the story of the Grand Inquisitor. I read each book for half an hour, put it down and picked up another. That is how I've always read. A buffet 
a rather a rolling banquet. <laughs> when I get close to the end, I race chapters. On a given day, I finish at least a half dozen books. Besides a headache last night, uh, I have blurry vision uh, and a pounding heart. Words were running through my head like armies of courier 12 ants. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I woke up with a hangover and shook off a blanket of books. I stumbled into the living room. It looked like there had been some literary orgy with naked volumes spread out in libertine poses. They were open and face down or standing up on their fanned out sides. Or folded over backwards, their spines painfully contorted, the pages tortured with dog ears, not a bookmark to be found. What kind of sadistic reader would leave characters raw and twisted in an unfinished plot? Young Jim Hawkins is left fighting Long John Silver in the fort on Treasure Island. Humbert Humbert anguishes in his unrequited love when Lolita abandons him. Eliza, the runaway slave, crashes through the ice on the Ohio River in Uncle Tom's cabin. Pierre bleeds his soulful reflections on War and Peace's battlefields. Charles Darwin, braving the waves and riptides of mutation. I heard the cries from all those characters caught in medias rays without resolution or climax. Don't you know what it's like? Don't you get viruses? How am I to release one of these literary warriors from his battle by selecting him as my favorite? I can't leave the others suffering. I can't. No matter how desperate I am to change my password, they are all my favorites. My identity will scatter to the winds. I will become no more than, than a throwaway line in a book, a three letter name in a Zoom play. I no longer need a password. All those other characters don't have one. Lock me out, Selecta. Cancel my account. I won't play your game. Send me to oblivion. Nobody will miss me. This is an abnormal end to the process. A bend. A bend, I say to you. A bend! What is the capital of Assyria? Uh, uh, Mark Lloyd. Yay, you guys. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that was so awesome. So if everybody could hop back on. Oh my gosh, hey. those were so good. Yay, Finelli. <laughs> AKA Fuzzy. <laughs> That's why acting is best left to the professionals. <laughs> well, we have a few comments from Facebook, but before we start, uh, Mike, if you could tell us like what was your thought process behind the three plays? Why did you write them? and? Uh, to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, yeah, they're new. Yeah, I, 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 I like to do new things and I like to have a, 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 a reason for it. And so inclusive theater is generous enough to put on new work. And not many people do. So we um, love that. That's right. I'm, we love it. Um, yeah, well, my friends love are it, love on it. this. <laughs> and, you know, and so um, you know, I just wanted to do um, just three sort of three plays about COVID. And it's funny because you know, as I'm writing the last one, I'm thinking, oh, we're gonna it's over. <laughs> it's all over. You know, <laughs> this is old. Zoom is old hack, and it's like we're gone, and everybody's gonna go back. And um, in the last I, couple of weeks, I don't know. We found out that things are not so good. So, uh, but uh, yeah. And then the idea is, uh, I just walk around and an idea hits me. Uh, the the book one, um, 
you know, I, I had uh, Jack, it was a gleam in my eye. No, I wanted to do <laughs> one with a big speech. I just wanted to do one with a big, big speech. I'm going crazy from COVID. Um, with, you know, um, and um, I was watching all the, the, the stupid, uh, it, they, they run in sequence. You know, they, sometimes there's the Medicare commercials. And so, you know, the, and <laughs> sometimes there's the, uh, the car warranty commercials and all oh, that yeah. stuff. And um, so, you know, I thought I would put that in because those people are still working. Um, <laughs> and Dr. Fuzzy was the, like the last one I did. And um, it's like, well, what about the animals? What about the, you know, what about the animals? I like animals and uh, I like animals. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I will say this is the first time that I've ever received text that said a butter penis. I know. <laughs> like, so that will be oh, forever at the top of my memory thing. That's right. You know? That's exactly right. Um, Just yeah, put it like, on my 3D printer. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the butter penis. I, I think I, I think it. if you look it up on the, I I didn't do that. But I'll bet you, you look that up on it. There's all kinds of I mean there's cake penises and there's fudge, you know, fudge, I'm sure. Oh yeah. So why not butter? Oh, why not? People yeah, have amazing I, imaginations. What is butter? Why what does Buffalo have this thing with the butter oh, land? Man. Because it's oh. just a Catholic city. It is, yeah, this is true. Yeah. Well, and I did you want know, to take a second as well to in like welcome Jane Cudmore and Jack. Egg, yeah, a, yeah. A googliaro. A googliaro. <laughs> hey, googliaro. And also for the first time on the other side of the screen, Catherine Parker, because she has written a play for us before, but never acted for us. So thank you for joining us. We're excited that I mean, you did an amazing job. I've got you know <laughs> comments from in, you know from the peanut gallery here. Um, loving your look, Selecta. Um, <laughs> yes, there you go. I think you're absolutely gorgeous. I agree. Um, and Jack, what an intense performance, super awesome. Same, same thing for you. And then we got woohoo! Anelli is acting. <laughs> like, so was, that happened. I, that. I was a stand in. That was it. <laughs> I think it couldn't have been better. I'm I think, old. I'm I old think. like Dr. Fauci. <laughs> Mike, when you got I, the New York accent. Two. 11 you years know, ago today, Mike, we were doing global warming. <laughs> Do you remember global, your, your show? Oh, global I remember warming? that. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, Facebook my God. Facebook reminded me that was 11 years ago today. That wow. Was, yep. I did your that show was, with Rob Chuck Charles. You, you, and, yes. And, you and Rob were amazing. Oh. Wow. Wait. And oh, and uh, Tammy. Tammy. Right. Tim was yeah. a crazy actor. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and Kat in Virginia, like the two of you, first of all, that French accent was adorable. I don't yeah, know what yeah. I thought was happening between the two of you, but you know, it was awesome. So just a couple, well, well, thank you. couple of comments here. Um, uh, for Ricky, yay, great Jack and Jane performance. They loved it. Um, we have a question on where you got your inspiration for Lou. Lou? Lou, yeah. Well, frog. That's all you have to do. Here, all you right? have to do is look, look at, look at Jack. Or uh, there's a number of actors who do that. Who, who? It, it's a vehicle. You know, it's the monologue. It's the dramatic monologue. Yeah. And it's, and it's a great vehicle for. You know, any actor. Anything. Uh, yeah, and then any actor, they love to do monologues, and. Um, this is a great medium because you can just like stare at the screen yeah. and, and you can, you know, I mean, he can go in and out and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it substitutes for walking around the stage, you know? Um, so, but it's, it's a, you know, you, you're trying to give parts to, to actors to do their stuff. I mean, all the acting here, other than me, it was <laughs> genuine. It was, gen I mean, it, it's amazing. It's amazing what actors do, um, <laughs> and that's what you're watching. You're not watching the the you're not watching the the uh, yeah, the words. The words are the words, but you're watching well, the actors put them to life. Well, it and, helps when the words are good. 
and no, the stories are but, good. And yeah, the stories but, are good. No, but you 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 turn you're alive. That's <laughs> you're alive. You're real people right. that were watching, and um, I'm just amazed how you can do it. Well, Let what's nice time. about working with you, Mike, is that you remove yourself from the process and you let the actors run with it and yep. then you know sometimes run something past you but i remember 11 years ago saying what did you intend here as the writer and you're like the writer's not here the writer's not here <laughs> like, okay so mike the director what would you like to see <laughs> like, oh i don't know just do something <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's a lot of things going around in his head yeah you know, that's what we're afraid of how did you <laughs> Oh. No, what I, well, I pick and choose because you're your way. You know, I'm not a director either, and uh, you guys, you guys have done this stuff. You know how to act, so I just pick and choose what I like. That's all. It's you know. Um, you want to make sure you're doing justice to what the author intended or what the director's vision is of what right. the author intended. But I know that getting caught up in discussions about intent is always messy at best. <laughs> true. Oh, yeah. Well, you got, you'll have people say, I need this and I want you to do it this way. Or what, you know, often, most of the time, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> really? And, and what... A lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of, um, a lot of uh, uh, writers are like that. Um, they write to try to understand, and you know, and that's that's the, what I write is to try to figure out what I mean, mm -hmm. and I get that watching the actors try to interpret it, and and if if they do something. That I never thought about, and it's like, well, oh, that's valid. That's, yeah, I meant that. Well, no, I didn't mean that. <laughs> but, but I put you in a position where you did it, and and it's like, I'll take that. I'll steal it. I'll steal it. I mean, I'll steal your line if you make a joke. <laughs> I'll steal your line, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> that's all right. But. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I'll be open about that. But uh, I mean, yeah, I usually know what I'm talking about, more or less. But um, sometimes I don't. And um, I just let it go. Let the audience figure it out. You know, right. that's like, fun. When you write, do you have actors in mind? Or are you? Sometimes. Because I know, like, this one was a pretty, like, you knew. Like, yeah. I want Jane and Jack. Like, that was from the beginning. Like, and I just wonder if that's who you were thinking of as you were writing it. Yes. That's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, I knew I knew it was going to be select. I mean, geez, has to be. Select. Yeah, perfect. I, I yeah. knew that. Um, <laughs> what else? Well, I knew. Uh, I figured that uh, that um, that. Oh, geez, I, I blanked out. I blanked out. This is what happens. That, that it never happens to me. Virginia. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I knew Virginia was going to be something. I knew she was going to be something. She's always something. Something. And, 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 I, and I knew, um, and I knew Catherine was going to be something. Right. So, um, and I knew Dallas was going to be there with his cans on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so I have a question. Bernice wants to know. Bernice. Uh -oh. Did Mark Lloyd get in this? <laughs> and he said, I'm the capital. <laughs> so. Oh, he did. At like the, the punchline of what's the capital of Assyria, which wasn't in the original play, but Amy suggested it. <laughs> why, well, what's the capital of Assyria? And then she said, well, why is it in Mark Lloyd? And I gave her a big long line saying, no. Nah. And then I said, no, that's a good idea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that oh was a good God. idea. So, a great idea. Was, so yeah, he, he was the capital of Syria, <laughs> but the, the town of Ma Mark Lloyd, which is actually Nineveh. I, get a mess I, I have to put that in there. <laughs> 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 it's a good idea. Well, because he room. went on and said, it's implied. It's implied. And I'm like, <laughs> I really thought you were just going to straight out and say, Mark Lloyd here somewhere. Where was it? <laughs> well, you know. 
That was awesome, though. I did not expect that either, so it was kind of fun to hear that. You, you broke me down. <laughs> you broke me down. I'm not sorry. No, I don't, I don't have all the answers. I, you know, That's writers funny. don't have all the answers. That's why there's rehearsals. That's why, you know, your rehearsals were rehearsed. That's why you have another run, you have another run, you have another run, and things will keep changing all the time. Yes. This is true. I have a question for Cat Zelda. Cat <laughs> Zelda. Yeah. Where, because um, I love, I love doing accents. I love accents. Uh, where did you get the inspiration study for your accent? <laughs> this was going to sound really awkward, but I've just kind of picked them up since I was a kid. So yes. when, like this one, I'm like, I had a really big French accent before and I once watched a bunch of YouTube videos of people speaking in French so I could pick it up a little more. Yeah. Wow. I do, All I do right. a lot of different accents because of that, just because I hear it and I can mimic it. It's awesome. Like, my mom does it too, actually. Which That's is a really gift. Really yeah. And she's super humble. She does amazing reenacting. Oh, nice. My cat is on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yeah, no, it was that. That was perfect. I was I great. could see me going to a French bakery, and and ordering something from her. Yes, <laughs> like I have Dupin. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, penis? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> or that, yes. Or that. No, oh no, no. You're gonna end up no, in no. Facebook jail again. Listen, oh, you no. know what? Oh, it doesn't take much. Go ahead. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> This is true. This is there, true. There is a St. Pierre in Miquelon. In, in, uh, in, if you look on the map, there is a French possession up there. It's French. It's completely wow. French territory. Wow. It's not Canadian. It's they just don't, You call them Canadian, they'll kill you. Wow. They are French. Yes, 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 yes. Interesting. I mean, they probably won't really kill you, kill you, but they're not going to be happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> they will correct you. <laughs> um, I did a Google search, Google image search of Anthony Fauci. Oh, no. And uh -oh. like the, the resemblance is uncanny. <laughs> I was, I was, yes. I was, true that. It's amazing. Yes, and we had a comment that said, and oh my God, he sounds like him too. So <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Yeah, but he talks. He, I, I I did it the first time we did it, Catherine. I I was good. I think I was good. <laughs> the second time around, it was I was. See, I, it's because you were trying to act. You that's just, right. You oh, just be yourself. That's right. Oh, there I you know. go. I know, and there was like no. I I thought maybe I can get away with the second time. But I lost the lightning, you know? <laughs> and it was only going to get worse. It was only going to get worse. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> you did great. Yeah, that was fun. I it was great. You did okay. great. And everybody, right. basically, not a lot of questions, but congratulating everybody. Um, excellent, excellent work. Um, What's up next, inclusive theater? That's so, right. Next month. Good question. Yes, great question. Next Good month. question, Kate. We have three short plays by Chad Smith. Um, he is not local. He is a new-ish writer that we found through, I believe, Green Buffalo Productions. And he linked back to us and we're gonna feature three of his. Um, we're also looking for new writers. So if you are a writer and you are interested in being showcased, if you have three shows, you get the month. If you have one, we'll put you with other people that are, um, going to want to get their stuff marketed and out there we're happy to do that we plan on staying online at least for the year because we know things are in flux and you know we don't know what's happening with covid and we want to make sure that we're as accessible as possible so if you're interested in you know participating you are more than welcome we're going to be running some more auditions because some folks yes. hadn't heard about us before and now that we've been doing this for what do we say? Like 16 inch months. It seems wow. like it's been 15 years. Um, <laughs> but we've been doing this since the shutdown began um, that maybe, you know, newer people have found us that, you know, we're always open to everybody. And then we also are working on a film challenge next month um, 
that is a global one. So if you're interested in acting, we're gonna need actors for three social justice plays. And um, one of them is written by Gary Earl Ross. Oh, wow. We have a couple others that are coming in. Um, if, so if you have one for consideration, it just needs to be on social justice. And the ones, so we only have a 30 minute um, window to perform and have them recorded, but we're gonna take all the ones that we get and we will feature them the next month. So even if it doesn't, I'm still gonna push to have all of them go to the festival because it's online, like why not? Yeah. Um, but if not, it will be featured and at least kept available to everybody. So if you have something you wanna submit, you can get it by August 1st, that's terrific. Inclusive theater of Western New York at gmail.com. So, yay. Yes, very good. All right. Well, we are just about at our nine o'clock okay. hour, so we can say goodbye, which is sad because it was the fastest hour this week. Again, <laughs> yeah. many thanks to Jane, hey, thank Jack, Catherine. I want to call you Kate. I know you're Catherine <laughs> and Kat and Mike and Dallas and Virginia. It was a great, great set of readings this month. Every month you it guys was, bring it, it and it gets better and it better. Is. It's so exciting I'm to amazed. see them. Yes. It's, Thank it's you so for doing fun. this, Amy. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. Well, hey, you know what? We are, we, we're a Thank family. We do it together. So <laughs> couldn't do it without you. So thank you. Right. We hope that you will uh, think about us in the future and we'll come back and, and do some acting with us. And hopefully one day we'll be back on stage. That's the dream, right? But we're working on it. And we're also yeah. working on Shakespeare. So there will be some kind yes. of Shakespeare this fall. Yeah. Some hell or high water. So watch our Facebook right. page and our website. We're gonna figure out something right cat we got this <laughs> it might be a yeah, hot mess nice. so you can say it's coming <laughs> it's coming right. but it's coming so yeah but thank you all so much for participating thanks to those who watched at home if you didn't catch this live it's going to be on the facebook page and on youtube in perpetuity it'll be there forever yeah, yeah. and if you report the video i'm coming after you <laughs> don't do it <laughs> Everything was good this time. Because there ain't no reason why. <laughs> no more of that. You got a problem, email me. No, really, it was, it was a great show. Right. Thank you. And thank you, Mike. Thank they were you. fantastic shows. And thank fantastic you. actors and directors. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Great job, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> good night. Good night. Thank you.